In this video, I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of Vertcoin and why I'm still mining it in 2024. One of my crypto mining goals for 2024 was kind of to set out and re-educate the masses on a lot of what I call the legacy crypto coins. I got into crypto mining in 2014, which so happens to be right around the time that Vertcoin came out. And... I'm really into a lot of the legacy coins, coins like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Vertcoin, Ubik. There's tons of mineable coins that came out uh, back in that time frame that are still around today, and they're still active blockchains. It's just a lot of people choose to chase, especially on the mining side, they decide to chase the latest coins instead of the legacy coins. Uh, I'm personally of kind of the opposite mindset where I like being active in those tried and true projects, especially ones that I really believe in. And Vertcoin is one of those. Uh, the price may seem like it's very low and it does have pretty big fluctuations in its price. However, uh, it does have quite a bit of value to it. And today I kind of wanted to talk through why I see that value in Vertcoin and kind of what Vertcoin means to the mining community space because a lot of people may not realize this. So Vertcoin came out in around January of 2014 and it came out at a time when Litecoin was moving to ASICs and it kind of set out to be a ASIC resistant mineable chain that had the same core principles as Bitcoin and Litecoin. However, their end goal was always to be ASIC resistant because the core community was of the mindset that ASIC centralized hash rate, which we've learned over time, it certainly does. And so one of the things you'll notice with Vertcoin is they have very similar tokenomics to Litecoin. In fact, they have the same exact uh, emission schedule pretty much. And we're going to jump over the tokenomics and I'm going to show you that. Uh, there are 84 million, just like there are with Litecoin, and the block times are two and a half minutes around the same time. And we can jump over to the website, and there's a couple things I want to point out. One is that they developed a very unique algorithm, and in their efforts to stay ASIC resistant, uh, for the longest time, they were on a layer of revision, and ASICs came out for that, so they forked off of that, and they created VertHash. And VertHash is very unique in that it, the algorithm itself is similar to ETHHash with some tweaks and some adjustments. Uh, the first thing is it has a fixed uh, data file of 1.9 gigs. That means it is mineable with 2 gig VRAM graphics cards. <clears throat> which works great for me. I personally have a rig of eight RX 560 uh, 2-gig cards on that, and those work spectacular. In fact, if we hop on over to Hive, here you can see those. So I'm running eight RX 560s on Bart Hash, getting around 326 kilohashes hashes a second. So I'm getting 2.6 mega hashes on the rig itself, and you can see each of these cards, now these are software wattage, but each of these are pulling around 25 watts a card. It's very low power, especially if you tweak it. And uh, that's one of the main advantages to this algo, to the point where they have created what they call a one-click miner. And this miner was built in the way that gamers could literally open this on their computer and click start mining and just let it mine and it'll accumulate and you can even play a lot of games at the same time this is mining. And if we scroll down on their website a little bit further here you can see no pre-mine, no ICO, and no airdrop. And if we hop on over to the specs this is where you're going to kind of see they kind of compare themselves to Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. I'm going to talk about these. So on the Ethereum side, there it's really the algorithm. So it does work similar to ETHHash. Uh, however, it is 
a little bit different. You can't throw ETHash ASICs on it. Uh, it can only be mined with CPUs or GPUs. CPUs really aren't that competitive since you can scale out GPUs. Uh, from a Bitcoin standpoint, it is a direct fork of Bitcoin. And that includes all of the updates that happens to Bitcoin get merged into the Vertcoin repository. And we'll take a look at their GitHub here in a minute. And the other thing, if you compare it kind of for Litecoin, it has 84 million coins, same as Litecoin, and it has two and a half minute block times, which are the same block times as Litecoin. Again, this, this coin was formulated from Litecoin at a time where Litecoin was going all ASIC. And the idea behind this coin was let's kind of keep those core principles in place. Let's create a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, money transfer mechanism where it can't be overtaken and controlled by large ASIC mining farms. So the people transacting peer-to-peer -peer can also be the same people that are securing the network. And that was the core principles that they wanted to implement. If we hop on over to the uh, Bitcoin comparison page, uh, you can watch this video if you want. It basically gives you kind of a quick introduction to pretty much everything I just talked about. Uh, and then they do give you this little ver verb here that says, uh, Vertcoin was created as a graphics card mine version of Bitcoin in January of 2014 as a response to Litecoin succumbing to ASIC control. It's important that everyday people with a desktop computer can mine the network so that the network hash rate is as decentralized as possible. And I want to make this very clear that their mission was that every person that wants to transact with the network should also be able to secure and mine the coin, right? So instead of taking all that hash rate like we have with like say Litecoin and having an entity that mines it and then separate users that are transacting with it, they they always wanted that to be kind of the same person. So me as an individual, if I want to transact on the network, I should be able to also secure the network, it, you know, with as simple as one graphics card. And you are able to do that with Vertcoin. It's a big reason I'm a big fan of Vertcoin. I would like to see it accepted at retailers. That's kind of the one drawback right now is that Vertcoin is not accepted as a payment rail through services like BitPay, things like that, like Litecoin and Bitcoin are. But I am still mining it. I do have a dedicated rig on it, which I plan to leave on it all throughout the year and just let it accumulate. And if we hop on over to their GitHub page, here you can see uh, that their one-click miner they actually updated two days ago. And their core code for the blockchain was updated two weeks ago. So they are actively making changes. Uh, and they even have a Docker image for their blockchain node. But if we hop on over here, we can see that uh, they are doing pull requests. Uh, the last major one was two months ago. And if we take a look at the releases section, here we can see release 23.2 was done in October. And that was to bring their code base up to Bitcoin Core 23.2. And if we take a look at the release notes for that, here you can see all of the changes that were implemented into the Bitcoin Core code that were then merged into Vertcoin. So they have been doing very well with keeping up with all changes that have been applied to Bitcoin. And if we scroll down a little bit to version 0 0.18, that includes the Taproot upgrade. So technically Vertcoin does have the Taproot upgrade as well as every update upgrade that has happened since then to Bitcoin. And I am running a uh, Vertcoin mining pool on my mining pool site. If anybody is interested in mining, you can mine to that. It's a 0.01% fee. Uh, we've hit seven blocks. Uh, this has been mining kind of on and off for the past year. I recently decided to put the rig on at full time. And so this will be hashing away. 
And one thing you'll notice is the network hash rate is less than a giga hash now, which is very, very, very low. We have not seen levels this low since well before the ETH merge. So post ETH merge, a lot of people jumped on the vert coin because of it being one of the least power consuming algorithms out there. And it was essentially losing the least uh, during, you know, that bad period where a lot of miners were trying to chase profitability. And so we saw a massive hash rate spike that has since dropped off. And we're sitting less than a giga hash right now. Uh, my rig, you know, gets around 2.6 mega hash per second. So we're doing pretty good uh, hitting, hitting like a block a day. Um, so pretty happy with that. Uh, we're just letting that churn through, and that's kind of where we are. That's just uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of Vertcoin, uh, kind of you know how they started, what they're aiming to do, um, and you know why I'm so bullish on it. And it really boils down to they are truly the what I will call the Litecoin for GPU miners. That's really what they aim to be, and that's what they continue to be.